Hello, everyone. Uh, today's podcast is why data is central to modern venues. We have today the folks from uh, NTT Data, uh, Bill and Ajay. Good morning. How are you today? Good morning. Wonderful. Good Thank morning. You well. Well, thanks. Yeah. Well, I want to start off with, you know, such, such an important topic. Uh, and, and, and Bill, uh, right now in our industry, in the sports and entertainment industry, data is the king. What, are, what does that really mean? The data is the king. So probably before more recent times, people would make decisions, um, have things that have done from history and, and done things in the past. Now with technology, there's so much more data that's being captured and really everybody is trying to say, how can they make sure that the decisions they make and the opportunities they have are data-based? I mean, it's really based on fact. Um, and it, it, actually also people are turning over in the industry. There's turnover in the industry of people. So we have to make sure that we have that data-based uh, information so people can make decisions that help the fan experience the fan journey uh, because that's what we're all about. But also then how do we make the internal decisions of how we support that fan journey through that data-centric approach? So that's really um, there's so much going out there. There's so much data that's being captured. How do you weave your way through that to get to the right information? That That's why it's king, but it can overwhelm you as well. So you need to be smart in how you go about to get that data. Yeah, no question. So along the terms of uh, data being the king, uh, maybe define, uh, Bill, uh, to show everyone, when we say digital transformation, explain that to the audience. So... Um, it's just a fancy word of saying, how do you take uh, things that you see and make it digitized? Because uh, it's really hard to look and analyze data that you have to monitor from a surveillance perspective. That's what we've done industry-wise uh, yeah. in the past, but that's always now and in the past and you hope you catch it. If we can make sure that it's data-based, we can then make sure that we can look at the data and we can boil it down to digitized information that we can make decisions around it. So that's really the side of things that we want to make sure that we can get it into a format that's digitized so it's easier for computers to, to go and analyze the information, but then give the alerts back to the operation staff and to the fan of what that what the interpretation of that is or, or allow them to interpret the data from there. So that's really kind of the digitized nature of that data overall. Ajay, you know, when, when what Bill was saying is that why is data insights important for venues and fan focused teams? So, um, uh, you know, leading from what Bill was talking about, you know, information is extremely important in yeah. our day-to-day -day life, right? So if you look at it every day, we are dealing with information. If any judgment or anything we're doing, it's all information. And if you truly look at it, information typically resides in all the data, which is flowing all around us. And it's everywhere. It's coming from every system, everything which is out there. Now, you know, if you truly look at a sort of a modern venues, uh, what comes to mind is that these modern venues typically try to leverage technology and automation to achieve their goals, but they are much more than, you know, just, just a place where a technology is, is deployed. They are places where they are trying to cater to multiple stakeholders, like the visitors, their partners, right? The teams out there, their employees. And, and there is so much happening. There are so many different departments. And it's not just those departments, you know, processing the information by themselves. They're also sharing the information between each other. Now, if somebody really wants to make a sense out of all that information, it becomes very important that you're able to analyze the data and extract some kind of meaningful information out of those, which could be shared with you know, multiple stakeholders and figured out what is, what is need, 
what is the right thing to do at a certain point in time. Now, in addition to that, um, if you are trying to provide an exceptional service to all your stakeholders, it becomes very important that you identify what are the roadblocks? What are the issues that you are actually facing? And if you really want to understand what your bottlenecks are, what your roadblocks are, what your issues in your system, in your processes are, so that you can provide exceptional experience to your stakeholders, it becomes very important that you try to understand what is happening in the system. You understand what the data is. You understand what kind of information is flowing. And that's where analyzing the data and extracting the insights out of the data and using it to become better comes into the picture. And that's why I think, you know, a, a venue or a modern building or, you know, arena, it becomes very important that you're able to leverage everything which lives within that place and, and leverage the data and the insight it, it provides you so that you can be a better provider to your stakeholders. The key question that, that, I, that keeps coming up, though, is the coordination of the data. All right, so who, when, when you're a typical stadium, who owns the data, first of all? Is it, where does it start and how does it filter out to do what you want to do, Ajay? Where, how, does that, how does that occur? So the ownership of data, you know, I think there, are, there would be many different ways to slice and dice it. Uh, typically, you know, the producer of the data would, would want to be the owner of the data as well. Right. Yeah. So what yeah. we have seen in many instances is, you know, if if there is a ticketing system out there, right, which is, you know, selling tickets and all that, if there is any information related to them, they want to keep the data to themselves from a ticketing system. But then, you know, if there are transactions happening within within a venue, then obviously, you know, venue is going to say, you know, hey, I own this data. This is happening in my world. So. I don't think there is one single entity who can say that I own this data. I think there are multiple players who own the data. And as I said, if you want to leverage that information to provide better service, all of them need to play very well and need to coordinate so that you, you, you have a common stakeholder who you need to satisfy. So the, the, the faster you come together and, and get the you know, those boundaries of who owns the data start merging together, I think it becomes better for, you know, the fans and, and everybody else who's operating out there. Phil, we're, we're actually, what Ajay is saying, we're, we're doing a case study right now. Can you give Phil the audience into what we're trying to do relative to what just Ajay just said? Sure. So we're doing some work with uh, Illich Sports and Entertainment Group in Detroit. Uh, and at their Little Caesars Arena in their Comerica Park. And what we've been doing is try to help them understand uh, the, the fan journey as they get to the arena. So as they get to the arena or stadium, it's um, how are they getting there? What entrances are they coming to? And um, how fast are they coming in? Or how long is it backing up there? And can we give them recommendations to get in uh, you know, faster, more efficiently from a fan perspective, but then also from a, a, an operations or and or a safety and security perspective, where is this bottom, potential bottleneck coming in? Or how fast are people coming in? Or what avenue are they coming in? So that you can deploy your resources to that area a, a little more efficiently. And also, you know, it's not just where are they at now, but what is the prediction going to be in the next 15, 20 minutes of where they're going to come? So in case you have to adjust, you could start adjusting your, your resources or you could start you know, directing the fans a little more to come a certain way. So uh, we're doing that to help them get the insights into what's going on on that side of things as they come in. Well, you know, looking at Detroit, uh and studying that now we have to have an infrastructure so so bill how should venues think about 5g right now for instance so 5g um is really just a a network to move data so not everybody needs 5g um but you may if you have some blind spots but think about it as 
how do you move data around your facility, uh, your arena, your stadium? How can you move the data to help you uh, get that insight of what you're trying to do? So as 5G becomes available, there's definitely advantages of it. Um, 5G, private 5G, that can say you get more coverage, you get better coverage. You have ways you can share data that's more secure. Um, so if those are your requirements, then absolutely you look at that to bolster the network movement. If you already have a good infrastructure where your data is moving around, you may not need to jump to 5G yet, but it's coming. It's going to be one that you go to. But I would look at it more as what are your requirements to move data around and then how do you satisfy that? And there's a bunch of different ways of which one very much is 5G and private 5G as you go there. So that's how I would say is the, the way you move the data around and, and the more data you get, the more things you need sometimes for that capability. We have the infrastructure. Uh, we, we, we know what we're doing with the data in a sense. So how does what role does NTT data doing in this space now and and taking the in the whole industry forward uh, Ajay yeah so um you know NTT is is making a significant headway in this uh specific arena and uh, you know as Bill was talking about what we are doing at Detroit uh we have uh NTT has a smart solutions product which is powered by our uh smart platform we we as a combined we call it smart management platform uh which basically plays in the world of data and you know this is what the topic is all about uh our product primarily what it does is uh leverage the data coming from anywhere you know so when i say that what i mean is it, it uses the data coming out of any of the sensors, any of the existing systems, or any other social media source, any legacy system existing in there. And we extract all the information from there and correlate all that information to provide meaningful insights by doing analytics on this. And, you know, as Bill was talking about, you know, doing some predictive analytics also on that so that we can help the client not just look at what is happening right now in the system, but based on what is happening right now, what does the future really looks like and where is where the bottlenecks are, how do you resolve those, provide uh, you know, a very user-friendly dashboard where uh, you know, our clients can really extract the information and leverage the information. So that's where we are doing and we are working with multiple clients to help them, uh, you know, uh, leverage the information within within their systems, within their venues, stadiums, and uh, um, you know provide insights and you know take them onto this journey, uh, you know where they can really make their venues smart and uh, provide exceptional fan experience. Uh, you say a smart venue. Uh, you know, there's competition out there, uh, Bill, with those who you know kind of post COVID that stayed home and. They really enjoyed their 18 you know, inch uh, screen and the uh, refrigerators down the hallway. Uh, we want them back in the stadium and, 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 and in a way that uh, we like more attendance, for instance, down the road. So how, you know, uh, we want to get them out of the home and back into the stadium. So we want that immersive experience at the stadium. They want things where they can get at home. How are we, how are we progressing there? That that's going to be a challenge because I think people have started to experience what what it could be like because it's less less hassle um, to go there because you could sit at your home as you said and be and be comfortable. But we have to make that journey as as comfortable as possible, and then the experience. To your point there, so most people now um, when they're at home, I mean I'm I'm a victim of it. I'm, I mean I'm watching a map and a, a game or a, a something, and then I'm looking on my phone to see what are the stats or what is the score of the other game or where is my competition playing. The more you can get what they call that second screen experience in the venue itself is one way to take the attention span of people to say, hey. They're getting that fan experience of their team, but if it's between innings of a baseball game, how can they check on things? Or if it's a timeout uh, or between periods of, of hockey or basketball, 
how do they look at the timeouts situation besides just going to get your your refreshment or anything else how can you make that seamless and even if it is going to get a refreshment how can you make that just about as easy as walking to your refrigerator to get your, your drink you're going to get how can you tell people what lines are are most efficient the more you do that the more you make it um, less of waiting time and more experience time um, because you can't you can't deal with the pen up emotion of a venue when it's exciting. You can't get that at home. You can get it in certain ways, but being there, that's the excitement you want people back doing every time. And the more you keep them in their seats for the exciting time, the better, and give them the other things that are going on. So those are some of the things that are, I think are really important for us to, to consider and figure out how we can make that exciting. And also, if you do things from, a, from an operator perspective, um, if you, your venue operator, you, you want people ex enjoying the experience of the retail activity. So if they, they want to get food, they want to get other things. If you make it easy for them, they're, they're enjoying that. And it's helping your operations as well to go through that, that process. So that's kind of the way I think that, that we've got to look at it is how to make that seamless as it goes and, and more enjoyable and, and extending out even from when you're in the venue to the journey to the venue, how can you make that easier for them? So those are the things I think we're, that we have to continue to look at from an industry perspective. Well, I, I think you've uh, done some good work with the Motor Speedway relative to this uh, comment you just made. Can you tell the folks a little about the work? You've done extensive work with the Motor Speedway? Yeah, so at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, um, you know, we've had the privilege of being a, a sponsor of the, the series the last couple of years, but because of that, we were able to start working with the Indianapolis Motor Speedway to help them look at the journey into the arena, um, because that is, that is, uh, you know, a, a big arena that is, you know, three miles around of, uh, with everything encompassing it, lots of different entrances, lots of different ways for people to to get to the arena and if you are to the to the the speedway itself and if you're not familiar or you don't have your tradition and even if you do have your tradition tradition things have changed since the pandemic so you need to look at how to get into the arena better where should i park how should i know about it so we've helped them both the operations security operations of the the uh, arena the event the speedway itself and the fan journey to say coming in this gate gets you in faster this is how long the wait time is this is where the parking area is that could be good this year we're going to start looking at the concession stands to say you know yeah. how how crowded are they when is the best time to go um you know the the indianapolis 500 is a is a, is a long race but there are things that you can do to make that experience good because there's ex you, you never know when the exciting time is coming of uh, besides just the end of the race, which may or may not be exciting. You want it to be, but there's many different pockets of excitement around. From a second screen experience, we also have uh, an app that the, the fan can look at because when you're at one spot, you can't see the whole way around. So you bring up your phone and you can see how your your driver, your favorite uh, athlete is doing when they're on the other side of the racetrack. So you can see that on the app and that's often what you're doing or listening to certain parts as it goes around so you can hear the activity. So giving them that experience is what we've been doing. And we've been enhancing things now on how to help people understand what maybe the best strategy is for pitting. What is the best strategy for your tire? So we're adding those insights as it goes, which is really important for the fan to, to get them more engaged and to, to get to a new, new, new set of fans out there uh, to bring them into the sport, which is what we all want to do so that we increase the, the excitement of, the, of whatever that sport is. But um, uh, indie, indie racing as one is an example. Well, I think it's a great platform or base for you to continue to enhance the fan journey. You know, there's 196 touch points that you're working with to make that the seamless opportunity for for that fan at the at the racetrack, for instance. And and I think we're in the right way. And I think uh, NTT data being the leader here, getting us the data we need 
to do what we we call the exceptional fan experience is, is what you do for a living. I'm going to just switch a little bit to a, a very important subject right now, Ajay. How does sustainability come into play? Yeah, so, you know, as you know, sustainability is, uh, you know, gaining importance all around, right? With, you know, the climate change and everything becoming a really hot topic. And, uh, you know, especially Europe making a lot of headways on that side. And unfortunately, you know, US being a little behind, but we're catching up, uh, you know, it's becoming more and more important. And especially, you know, these venues uh, that are such huge, you know, locations and they have so many different systems operating, uh, they definitely become a important focus to see what is being done uh, you know, on that side of the world as well. Uh, now, one thing also to understand is that no matter what you do, your fans are also getting more aware and they are also now starting to make those observations and trying to understand, okay, hey, this is the venue that I go to. This is the stadium I go to. This is the sport arena that I go to. What are you doing, uh, you know, from a sustainability perspective with the newer generation, you know, they, they seems to be more concerned and they are obviously looking at it. And that, that sort of drives some judgment in their mind as well. And that becomes important. So there is one side of the fans who are thinking about it, but then it becomes very important that when you start acting on it, and start bringing those practices within their venues and start demonstrating that they are with them, that we are with our fans and we understand what you're talking about. We understand what you need and we will provide you what, what needs to be done. Um, and, you know, if you remember Dr. Lou, you know, our event, um, which was in Atlanta, there was some good discussions happened around uh, you know, what different venues are doing from the uh, sustainability perspective. And there are many venues, you know, they are doing many things like Mercedes-Benz Stadium, you know, they are, uh, you know, they are doing away with any kind of their, uh, you know, waste and they are trying to achieve uh, zero waste. Uh, and they are doing pretty good, uh, you know, in terms of that. So many venues are doing a lot of things. And where my mind actually goes is, I think, there are venues who are doing many things, but I think venues need to start thinking of it in a little bit more strategic manner rather than doing one-off things here and there. And, uh, you know, I again bring back to the same thing, uh, you know, which I was talking about uh, in the event as well, uh, you know, which Peter Drucker said, you know, if you can't measure, you can't manage it. And sustainability as a topic is something which requires significant management, uh, you know, if you really want to achieve some kind of impact uh, from a sustainability perspective. And therefore, it becomes very important that, you know, stadiums are looking at it in a very systematic manner, trying to understand what is happening in their stadium and their venues, and then trying to set up some benchmarks for them, and then following up those benchmarks and then trying to achieve the sustainability goal uh, that they want to set for themselves and, and therefore, you know, uh, bringing their fans along and, and uh, you know, providing what they're looking for. Do you uh, have a uh, NTT data, have a tool to assist those stadiums that might uh, obviously are very interested in sustainability, some guide points for them? Absolutely. We do have, uh, you know, again, our, Smart Solutions, uh, you know, powered by Smart Platform has a, a very powerful tool where we can help them measure so that they can manage it better. So, uh, you know, we are leveraging the same technology. We are leveraging the concept of data where we can help them analyze their venues and help them provide insights into how they are consuming, uh, you know, the, the power or what is happening, uh, you know, from the waste management perspective, what is happening from the carbon footprint perspective. And through a very user-friendly dashboard, we try to relay all that information in front of them 
track it, manage it for them and share the information so that they can make better decisions in terms of where they need to focus more and where they do not need to focus more, where they are doing good and where they are lacking behind. And then, you know, work, uh, you know, as a holistic system so that you can move your whole venue and stadium, uh, you know, into the right direction rather than, you know, being more a little siloed. So we do have a, a very strong solution in place uh, that we are, uh, that we have deployed it at, uh, you know, uh, one of our uh, Sunnyvale um, offices and we are actually tracking it and we are trying to make a significant impact by providing, uh, you know, valuable information to our clients. Ajay, let me just add, we've, we've done it a couple other places as well, but I think the key point that Ajay said that, that is really important is there's lots of different things under sustainability and the ESGs. Pick somewhere to start, start measuring. There's a tool that we have that can help. There's other tools out there, but start measuring because it's important for all of us because your fans are starting to think about it and they're picking where to go when people are, are interested in this area to some degree. Yes, the, the same thing here, uh, you know, all our venues are scalable. So let's say I'm starting out to look at my uh, data processes for my stadium. Could, could you help them? What kind of process could, can NTT data consult with stadiums to assist them in, in, in setting up strategic planning for them, you know? Right. So there's two sides. I mean, you need to plan. You need to figure out what your objectives are from whatever it is with data. Don't just say, throw data into this data swamp, data warehouse, and then start mining it. Because what is your business solution? Think about your business because you you don't want to just do technology for the sake of technology. You want to do technology for a good of your business processes. So look at your business processes. If it's sustainability, because you think that's going to help you bring more fans, and you, and it's you know, to some degree, it's the right thing to do. But what is the reason? What is the area you want to go at? If it's like Ajay said that they're doing at Mercedes Benz around um, trash and and a zero trash, perfect. That's it. Maybe you don't need a lot of technology there. But if it is where you want to go to um, the, the fact of monitoring your energy consumption, well, then you need a little more things to measure. If you want to do the fan journey, is it the fan journey? all encompassing or how do you start just by getting them in getting them out getting them to their right seat so that type of discussion is where you know we we would help people look at it and say how do you get started what's the right way to get started and what's your roadmap of things you want to do so because you you all we all want to be you know the most advanced in one thing but you can't get to the most advanced if you don't start on a step process almost um, and that's how we look at it is how do you get started to, to begin the process? Pick something that's good for you and shows a return because you have to answer that return to some degree as well to your leadership, to your management, um, and to your fans that you're doing something on that front. So that's where, you know, consulting it with that mindset is what I think is really important. Um, a very good answer. And I think you help the audience uh, better understand uh, the processes uh, to get started as well as what, what it could be. And I, I just want to thank uh, Bill and Ajay for a, a great uh, podcast here today. And I, given the, our industry an opportunity to realize how important data being the king can provide an exceptional fan experience for all of us. And that's, that's the direction we all want to move into to be competitive out there, to grow our programs, to increase attendance, and, uh, and finally, really, operational efficiency is, is, is the other key point that we're trying to accomplish here in the profession. I want to thank both of you. Great uh, uh, time here on the podcast and appreciate all the help that NTT Data has done for the Institute and for the industry. And thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you, Dr. Lowe. Appreciate it. And, and let's keep working together. Yep. Thank you. Sure will. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.